gracias Señor Jesús before you sit down antes de que se siente we want to welcome uh, Sister uh, Jennifer Davis Amen. God bless you so glad that you are here her and her son and I believe that's Brandon Brandon Amen we're so glad that they're here come and look at son aquí this día Amen our prayer is that people receive everything they came looking for today Amen Reciban todo lo que vinieron buscando. So, we thank God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Puedes sentarse en la presencia del Señor. We serve an amazing God. We serve a powerful God. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. Servimos a un Dios maravilloso. Servimos a un Dios poderoso. And uh, we are just excited for what God is doing. Estamos contentos. Estamos exitosos por lo que Dios está haciendo. We know God is moving. Sabemos que Dios se está moviendo. ¿Cuántos dicen amén? And um, God is looking for hungry people. Is there any hungry people in the house today? Yeah. Thank you, all three of you. Is there anybody else in the house that is hungry today? ¿Alguien más? Yeah. You can shout in here, amen? God is looking for hungry people. Dios está buscando gente que tenga hambre. Yeah. Gente que tenga hambre de Dios. People that are hungry for Him. I'm talking about... The, the physical food. I'm not talking about pizza or hamburgers. I'm talking about hungry for his presence. Estoy hablando acerca de hambre por su presencia. Is anybody here today? Hallelujah. And can say, Pastor, I'm hungry today. Yo tengo hambre. I need something. I need a, I need a word, amen, that you can grab a hold of it like a steak and a hamburger or whatever it is that you're eating today. Lo que estás comiendo. Vamos a tomar la palabra. This is the word of God. This is the bread of life. Es el pan de vida. Es la palabra de Dios. And this is what we need to sustain us. La necesitamos para sostenernos. ¿Cuántos dicen amén? And that's just what the, that's the title of my message today. The title of my message is, I am hungry for you. Tengo hambre de ti. Come on, tell somebody, I am hungry for the Lord. Tengo hambre para Dios. We are a very talkative church. Somos una iglesia que habla mucho. We talk to each other only when the pastor tells you to talk. Amen? Uh, but we are hungry for God. We are hungry for a move of God. Estamos uh, hambre, tenemos hambre por un mover de Dios. Amen? I want to talk to you about reigniting the passion for God. Como reencender la pasión para Dios. Because sometimes we can start good But we don't always end good. A veces comenzamos bien, pero no terminamos bien. We start uh, hungry and passionately in love with God, then that, that love just fades away. Come on, somebody. Com comenzamos, hermano, con una pasión fuerte para Dios y luego esa pasión se va deshaciendo. It's kind of like in a marriage. All right? Husbands, wife, let me talk to you for a moment. Before you got married, you were passionately in love with vice versa. Right? Estabas enamorado de ella. You would open the door, honey. Lay down your jacket when there was a puddle. Te la chaqueta, la ponías. But the moment you said I do, el momento que dijiste sí, you close your door. <laughs> you open your door, you close your door. We, we do that as men sometimes, right? There's times, I've told you this before, I'm, I'm, I'm in a hurry and I get inside the car, turn it on and put on the AC and my wife is outside the passenger door, she's just looking at me, I'm like, what are you doing? Get inside the car, let's go, I gotta go. She's like, What do you want? And she looks down at the door, so I have to get off. But tengo que bajar y tengo que ir a abrirle la puerta a mi esposa. Que a veces vamos de 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 de, de rápido. We're we're in a hurry. And, but you know, those are things that I used to do to get her to marry me. You know what I mean? When I used to just bring her chocolate or flowers just because. Now I have to wait for a holiday or anybody in here like come on somebody I don't even I know there's somebody else like me come on now I know you don't want to say nothing man that's okay your wife will talk to you when you get home 
or late to the wedding. Es traiano rosa, le traen los chocolates, pero ya se casaron y chocolates, chocolates already all melted. You bring it to her, all melted. You eat half of the box. You know when we first fell in love with God, we wanted to do everything. We wanted to tell everybody about God. We will be, we're here early in church. Estábamos en la iglesia temprano. Le decíamos a Dios, a todos de Dios. We would talk to people. I gave my life to the Lord. I gave my testimony. Le daba el testimonio. Hablaba de Dios. But then when time started progressing, time started passing by. El tiempo se pasó. All of a sudden, you don't want to talk to nobody. Everything frustrates you. Todo te frustra. Ya no hablas con nadie. You don't share your testimony. What happened is the passion that you had went away. La pasión que teníamos, mi hermano, se fue. And we need to get the fire back. I said we need to get the fire back. Because we displease God. We displease. Nosotros, mi hermano, a veces desagradamos a Dios. Con nuestras acciones. We displease Him with our actions. But yet we come and ask Him to do something for us. Venemos y le decimos que haga algo para nosotros. Pero no le somos fiel a Dios. Because we have lost the fire. Hemos perdido el fuego. We have lost the fire for God. And losing the fire for God is equivalent to losing your first love. Perdiendo el fuego de Dios, mi hermano, es equivalente a perder el primer amor. If I remember correctly, the book of Revelations, it tells us why, it tells the church, why have you forsaken your first love? In other words, why have you left your first love? ¿Por qué has dejado tu primer amor? Return, it says, return back to your first love. Regresa una vez más a tu primer amor. I believe that a lot of the churches have lost their first love and they go through the motions have you ever gone through the motions a veces nomás vamos por las por las emociones porque hemos perdido nuestro primer amor if you go with me to the book of uh, Psalms chapter 27 Salmo capítulo 27 Psalms 27 verse 4 is a very familiar scripture David David being the man that he was David cheated. David betrayed his wife with another woman. David David traicionó a su esposa con otra mujer. David salió. And I'm not saying that it's good that he did that. But the Bible calls David a man that was after God's own heart. Dice que David era un hombre conforme al corazón de Dios. ¿Cuántos dicen amen? Is there anybody here after God's heart? Amen. Or are you after his hand? See, you can be after his heart, but you can also be after his hand. And a lot of the people are after God's hands, meaning, what can you give me? Right? Mucha gente, estamos tras el corazón de Dios, estamos tras la mano de Dios. Hallelujah. The psalmist said something here in, in verse 4. Psalms 27 verse 4 says, One thing I have desired of the Lord. One thing I have desired of the Lord. That will I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. When? Always. Say with me. When? Always. All the days of my life. For what? Why do I want to be in his house? Para que quiero estar en la casa de Dios? To behold the beauty of who? Lord. Lord. And to inquire in his temple. To behold the beauty of the Lord. I want to I wanna be in his house. People don't want to come and dwell in his house. People just want to come and visit God's house. La gente ya no quiere vivir en la presencia de Dios. Quiere solamente visitar la presencia de Dios. Is anybody in here today? Church, we need to get hungry for... God, tenemos que, mi hermano, tener esa hambre para Dios. We need to come back to our first love. Tenemos que regresar, mi hermano, a nuestro primer amor. Let me give you four things, just real quick, of the four signs that you have lost your first love. Cuatro señales 
que usted ha perdido su primer amor. Are you ready? Nobody's ready? Say, I'm ready. If you're writing down, write this thing down. Si está escribiendo, escriba esto. Number one. This is a sign that you have lost your first love. Number one. You no longer want to please God. ¿Cuántos señales que le voy a dar que están aquí que son señales que usted ha perdido su primer amor? Número uno es usted ya no quiere, aleluya, agradar a Dios. You don't want to please God anymore. You don't want to please God. We rather please man than please God. Queremos agradar al hombre y no a Dios. Are you here with me today? Amen. Number two. Number two, you become casual. Venemos a ser casuales. You become casual. The word casual means relaxed. I believe there's a lot of Christians that are just relaxed and laid back. Mucho cristiano, mi hermano, más relajado. Amen. Another word for it. I can't even read my own handwriting. That's not good, right? When you can't read your own handwriting. Another word for casual is being conformed. Es ser conformado. When you become conformed, that tells me that you've lost your first love. Que has perdido tu primer amor. Number three, number three. You are not committed. You are not committed. No estás comprometido. You are not committed. You are not committed to God and you're not committed to the ministry. No estás comprometido con Dios y no estás comprometido con el ministerio. Hallelujah. And number four is the worst one. Cuatro es la más peligrosa podemos decir number four is you begin to give God strange fire fuego extraño you must say what are you talking about strange fire you find it in Leviticus chapter 10 verse 1 when Aaron's sons came and offered God a sacrifice and God called it strange fire cuando los hijos de Aarón vinieron ahí en Levíticos capítulo 10 versículo 1 dice que los hijos de Aarón vinieron a ofrecerle fuego extraño a Dios when I look this up strange fire it means that they came in to offer God something that was not they were not authorized to do this no, no estaban autorizados a entrar a darle a Dios ese sacrificio another uh, uh, another definition of it is they were offering God something that was not pleasing to God. Le ofrecieron a Dios algo, mi hermano, que no le agradaba a Dios. Let me tell you something real quick. I said this before and I'll say it again. Many people, I've heard many, many people say, I worship God the way I want to worship God. Yo adoro a Dios como yo quiero adorarle. I worship Him my way because He knows my heart. Él conoce mi corazón y yo no. But let me tell you what the Word of God says. He said that He is looking for true worshipers that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. Él dice que está buscando adoradores que le adoren en espíritu y en verdad. If He's looking for true worshipers, that means that there is false worshipers. Amen. Si está buscando verdaderos adoradores, quiere decir que no hay verdaderos, que hay imitadores. So when you begin to worship God your way, you're offering a strange fire unto God. Le estás ofreciendo fuego extraño a Dios cuando le adoras a tu manera. Because there's only one way to worship Him, and that is through the Spirit of God. A través del Espíritu, en verdad, true worship. Amen. Come on, somebody. True worship is what God is desiring. We are complacent. Somos muy, nos, somos muy complacidos. Estamos muy, muy relajados. I don't feel like worshiping God today. I don't feel like lifting up my hands today. I don't feel like saying amen today. No quiero decir, no siento como decir amen. 
No siento levantar mis manos. But listen, if it wasn't for God, you would not be here today. If it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have opened your eyes today. If it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have been breathing, breathing today. If it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have opened your eyes today. If it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have been walking today. Come on, somebody. If it wasn't for God, you would not be where you are today. He is worthy to be praised. Él es digno de ser alabado. Si no fuera por Dios, ¿dónde estuviera? I don't feel like we're not worshiping when you feel like it and worship God when you don't feel like it. Cuando lo sientas o cuando no lo sientas, adora a Dios. Adóralo. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. God is, God is moving in this ministry. God is moving in this church. And we have been seeing miracle after miracle. Estamos viendo milagros, mi hermano. Estamos viendo milagros tras milagros. This woman that was here on Sunday, she was sitting down right here. Nobody touched her. Nobody laid hands on her. Nobody put oil on her. Nadie le puso aceite. Nadie la tocó. Nadie le... She came up and right after we got through doing the praise and worship, acabamos la alabanza de la oración. She said, Pastor, come here. Dijo, Pastor, venga. She said, I had an operation. I came in with my arm like this, but look at me now. I can move it. Lo puedo mover. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Why? Because she believed that she thanked. Hallelujah. Because it is God is doing something in this place. Dios está haciendo algo en este lugar. Amen. God is doing something in this place, church. But we have to do something to sustain this move. Did you hear me? Tenemos que hacer algo nosotros para sostener este mover de Dios. And you cannot sustain this move of God without passion. Yes, right. Amen. That's Did you hear me? Yes. No podemos sostener este mover de... Listen, I don't know about you. I don't want this to end. Yo no quiero que esto se esté. Este mover de Dios se acabe. I want what God is doing. I want it to continue. Quiero que continúe, mi hermano. Are you here with me? Because I don't want to become a religious or I don't want to fall into a routine. No quiero quedarme a caer en una rutina. No quiero que seamos mecánicos. We don't want to be fall into something mechanical. No. I want this thing to, to, to grow because we're going to begin to see miracles. Yeah. We're going to begin to see miracles. Vamos a ver milagros. We're going to see creative miracles. Milagros creativos los vamos a ver. Aleluya. We are going to see these creative miracles. Are you here with me today? Yeah. But we need to sustain this move of God. Yes. We need to sustain it. Necesitamos, mi hermano, sostener. Because I'm going to tell you something. It's not going to be only in the area of healing. No solamente va a ser en el área de la sanidad. But it's going to be in the area of finances too. Va a ser en el área de las finanzas también que se va a mover. Because God is going to begin to move. And God is going to begin to restore. And God is going to begin to do some great things. Why? Because the finances are needed to do what you need to do for God. Finances are needed to do what we need to do for God. Las finanzas se necesitan para hacer lo que Dios nos ha llamado a hacer. Both in your life and in the ministry. En tu vida y en el ministerio. But the bottom line is the passion. La pasión de Dios. If you lose the passion. You lose it all. Señor, amen. Si pierdes la pasión, pierdes todo. Are you here with me? Amen. There has to be a continual fire in this place. Tiene que haber un fuego continuo en este lugar. There has to be a continual fire to have, aleluya, continual healings, continual miracles, milagros continuos, aleluya, sanidades continuas necesitamos. But there has to be fire. Debe de haber fuego. Aleluya, debe de haber fuego. There has to be fire. Oh, glory, 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 glory. We need to sustain this. Sostenerlo. Sostenerlo. Let me tell you something. All of life begins with passion. Todo en la vida, mi hermano, comienza con pasión. Either passion for something or passion for someone. Pasión para algo o pasión para alguien. You are motivated by passion. Eres motivado por pasión. Are you hearing me? Passion is what you are. La pasión es lo que tú eres. Es lo que tú eres. 
Passion is what you are. Passion is what drives you to do what you do. La pasión es la que te mueve a hacer lo que tienes que hacer. Say passion. Again. Because y'all 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 sound like y'all have an eight. Probably you have an eight. Maybe. Say passion. Look at your neighbor. Tell him passion. Pastor, what is passion? ¿Qué es pasión, pastor? ¿Qué es pasión? Passion is an inner fire that drives you. La pasión, mi hermano, es un fuego interior, mi hermano, que te mueve. It is an inner fire that drives you. It is an inner fire that drives you. And passion comes from the presence of God. La pasión viene de la presencia de Dios. Are you here with me? La pasión viene de la presencia de Dios. But where does passion? Where does it come from? Where does it originate? De dónde viene? De dónde se origina? These four places. Number one. Número uno. Are you ready? It originates from an atmosphere or an association. Se origina de una atmósfera o de una asociación. Se origina de una atmósfera o una asociación. It is originated from an atmosphere or association. If you associate or stay close to an atmosphere that is full of fire or full of the presence of God, you will get full and you will catch on fire. Si usted se asocia o si usted está en una atmósfera que está llena del fuego y de la presencia de Dios, usted mismo va a estar en fuego también. You cannot be in the midst of somebody that is on fire and you not catch fire yourself. Usted no puede estar alrededor de una persona que no está en fuego o que está en fuego y usted no puede estar en fuego. Are you here with me? It, it originates through an atmosphere and an association. Una atmósfera y una asociación. There will be people that are going to come into this place that are hungry for God. And the same atmosphere, the same fire, and the passion, and the same hunger, and the move of God is going to grab a hold of these people. Va a tomar a esta gente. But then there's also going to be people coming into this place that just come as a routine. Que vienen como una rutina. And they're not going to get on fire. They're not going to get into the presence of God. Because to them it's something strange. Es algo extraño. Para muchos que vendrán, no vienen con hambre, vienen nomás por venir. Are you here with me? But I'm telling you today that there's going to be some people coming into this place, hallelujah, that are going to be on fire for God, and they're going to get into the presence of God, and the fire that is in this place is going to begin to burn in their life. Ese fuego va a empezar a quemar en su vida. Why? Because the atmosphere is right, because we have the fire in this place, porque hay fuego aquí en este lugar. Amen. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Oh, hallelujah. Pastor, how do I know there's fire? Because when we come to pray, we come to pray for God to move. When we come and we do the 5 a.m. prayer, we say, God, move, touch, touch the people, fill the people with the Holy Spirit. Señor, toca la gente, llénalo. My wife comes in and she prays. The prayer warriors, every Tuesday, they're out there praying. Las guerreras de oración, todos los martes, están orando. Señor, llena este lugar, llena este lugar. Fill that place. We come in here Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and we do our leadership uh, prayer at 9 o'clock in the morning. Father, let your fire come down. Que caiga tu fuego. Señor, llena este lugar. God, fill this place. I know that the fire of God is in this place. You say que el fuego de Dios está en este lugar. Why? Because we have called upon it. Lo hemos llamado. Lo hemos llamado el fuego de Dios. Are you here with me? Say fire. Fire. Oh, glory to God. Does anybody want the fire of God? ¿Cuántos quieren el fuego de Dios? Aleluya. 
Look at your neighbor, tell him, I want the fire of God. Yo quiero el fuego de Dios. Yo quiero el fuego de Dios. Aleluya. I need the fire of God. Aleluya. Where does it come from? Where does it originate? ¿De dónde viene? ¿De dónde se origina esta pasión? Number one, I told you it originates from an atmosphere and an association. De una atmósfera y una asociación, número uno. Number two, this passion comes from your calling. Esta pasión, número dos, viene de tu llamado. Viene de tu llamado. I've heard so many people say, listen, I'm, I've been called to be a prophet and you're dead. Wow. Dice, yo soy profeta, pero estás muerto. I am an evangelist, but there's no anointing in your life. Yo soy un evangelista, un evangelista, pero no hay nada de unción en tu vida. Estás muerto, aleluya. You're dead, aleluya. Aleluya. Thank you, Jesus. We need to be on fire for God. We need to be on fire for God. Debemos de estar en fuego por Dios, aleluya. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9, very familiar scripture, aleluya. Jeremías capítulo 20, versículo uh, 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 9. Jeremiah 20, verse 9, what does it say? Aleluya, don't put it up there. Man. Jeremiah 20, verse 9, listen to what it says. Mira lo que dice, aleluya. Mira lo que dice. Then I said. I will not make mention of him. Of who? Of God. Nor speak anymore in his name. Ni hablar más de su nombre. Ya no me, lo mencionaré. Ya no hablaré más de su nombre. This is a prophet of God. Un profeta de Dios. Jeremías who was called when he was a young boy. Before the foundations. Hallelujah. The earth. When, when he was in his mom's womb. Antes de que estuviera en el vientre de su mamá. Fue llamado profeta. He's a prophet. And he came. You know what he said? I'm not going to talk about him. I'm not going to mention his name. No voy a hablar de él. No voy a mencionar su nombre. No voy a mention. He said, but his word. His word was in my heart. Like a burning fire. Shut up in my bones. Pero su palabra, aleluya. Estaba, dice, quemando mi corazón. Como fuego ardiente, aleluya. It was shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back. And I could not. Estaba quería detenerla, pero no la podía. Aleluya. When you have a calling in your life, if you have been called, there better be some fire inside of you. If you say that, Pastor, I've been called. Pastor, I've been called. There better be some fire. There better be a demonstration. Aleluya. Debe de haber una demostración. Debe de haber fuego en tu vida. Fire in your life. People need to know you've been with God. People need to know that you've been hanging around with Him. La gente, mi hermano, debe de darse cuenta que tú te has juntado con Dios. The Bible says that when Moses came down from the mountain, he said that they could tell that he would have been with God. Ellos podían ver que él estaba con Dios. Why? Because of the radiance, because of the glory that was upon his life. Por la gloria, mi hermano, la, 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 el, el lumbrar de su rostro told the people, hey, listen, he was not with just anybody. He was up there with God. Él estaba ahí arriba con Dios. Aleluya. I want to tell you something, church. I know you've been called. I know you've been chosen. I know you've been anointed. Aleluya. But there's a price that needs to be paid. Hay un precio que tenemos que pagar. And that praise, hallelujah, that price, hallelujah. It's done in your knees, it's done to rodillas, it is on your face, prostrated. Está postrado en el, en, en el rostro, mi hermano, tu cara en el rostro, ¿por qué? Porque Dios quiere usar. God wants to use you. God wants to use you, hallelujah, to lay hands on the sick. God wants to use you to pull the people out of captivity. De sacar a la gente del cautiverio, de traer sanidad al que necesita de ser sanidad. To restore, to come back. Hallelujah. God said, I'm going to take you by the hand. Hallelujah. Cyrus in, in Isaiah chapter 45, I believe it is. Isaías 45 dice, ha sido, lo tomó de la mano. And he took him, hallelujah. Y lo llevó, y lo llevó. He said, I took him by the hand, hallelujah. And he only took him by the hand to show him what he could do. Lo tomó de la mano, mi hermano, solamente para mostrarle que lo que podía hacer. Are you here? Hallelujah. Your calling is where the passion originates. If, you're, if there's no passion in your life for that calling that God placed in your life, you are never going to do anything for God. You are never going to do anything for God. 
si no hay pasión mi hermano para hacer lo que Dios nos ha llamado a hacer aleluya no vamos a ser usados por Dios glory to God are you here with me what was number two And you're calling number three is very important Número tres es muy importante. Where does this passion originate? This passion originates from the altar. Esta pasión, mi hermano, se origina en el altar. In the altar, the altar is a place of sacrifice. El altar es el lugar de sacrificio. Es el lugar de sacrificio. What is sacrifice? Well, what does sacrifice do? What does it mean? ¿Qué, los, ¿Qué significa un sacrificio? Sacrifice means drawing near to God. Sacrificio quiere decir acercarnos más a Dios. In other words, every time you sacrifice something, you draw near to God. Cada vez que sacrificamos algo, mi hermano, nos acercamos más a Dios. ¿Cuántos dicen amén? The sacrifice of the New Testament is totally different than the sacrifice of the Old Testament. El sacrificio del Nuevo Testamento, mi hermano, es totalmente diferente al sacrificio del Antiguo Testamento. ¿Cuántos dicen amén? In the two New Testament, you have praise, you have worship, you have prayer, you have fasting, you have giving, offerings in the New Testament. And you have to do this to maintain the fire in the altar, aleluya, para poder mantener el fuego del altar, necesitas alabanza, necesitas adoración, necesitas oración, necesitas ayuno, necesitas traer ofrenda, you need to bring offering, worship, prayer, fasting, praise and worship, to maintain the fire going, aleluya, in the altar, you have an altar, I have an altar, tú tienes un altar, yo tengo un altar, necesitamos que el fuego sea continuo, We need the fire to be sustained. We need to keep that fire going in our life. Hallelujah. How many of us want the fire to be in you? ¿Cuántos quieren que el fuego esté en ustedes? Let me tell you something. If there's no praise, if there's no offering, if there's no worship, if there's no fasting, if there's no spiritual sacrifice, then there's no fire. Si no hay alabanza, si no hay adoración, si no hay ofrenda, si no hay ayuno, si no hay, aleluya, un sacrificio espiritual, no hay. Come on, somebody. There's no fire. We need fire. God gives us the fire, but it's our job to sustain the fire. Dios nos da el fuego, Dios manda el fuego, pero el trabajo tuyo y mío es sostener ese fuego, que no se apague el fuego. Don't let the fire die. Don't let the fire die. Aleluya. Some of us, we, we, we probably just have it. We're just cold. Aleluya. We're not, we're, there's not, it's just smoke maybe sometimes. And you know that sometimes when the fire, aleluya, is out and, and the coals are still there, you can blow on it and you can just swing on it and all of a sudden it catches, aleluya, fire back on. A veces, mi hermano, cuando está ahí el carbón que ya no más son puro, el puro carbón y no hay fuego y sale humo y le sopla aleluya y le sopla y de repente empieza el fuego una vez más I want to tell you today that there's a wind that is blowing from up above hay un fuego que está soplando del cielo and he's blowing on your cold fire on your cold aleluya and he's burning and he's blowing and he's blowing why? because his desire is for you to be on fire for God el deseo de Dios es de que tú estés en fuego por Dios. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 aleluya. We need the fire of God. Necesitamos el fuego de Dios. Necesitamos el fuego. We need the fire of God. What is the definition of fire? ¿Qué es la definición del fuego? Fire is one of the aspects of the nature and presence of God. Fire is one of the aspects of the nature and presence of God. El fuego, mi hermano, es uno de los aspectos de la naturaleza y la presencia de Dios. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. When the presence of God comes, it will come like fire. Cuando la presencia de Dios viene, viene como fuego, mi hermano. Viene como fuego ardiente, aleluya. 
it comes and it comes and it burns all iniquity and it burns all sin quema, quema, quema toda iniquidad quema todo pecado are you here with me it burns everything that is not of him quema todo lo que no es de that is why we need the fire of God to sustain this move that God is doing in this church para sostener este mover aquí que está sucediendo en esta iglesia se necesita el fuego de Dios come on somebody look at your neighbor tell him we need the fire of God we need the fire of God the last thing that you need in order to maintain or to where, where the passion originated or I told you that it was through what? Through association and atmosphere. I told you that it was your calling. I told you that it was the altar, el altar, asociación, por atmosfera, tu llamado, el altar. But number four, it originates passion originates from the very presence of God. La pasión origina desde la misma presencia de Dios. De la presencia de Dios. God sends fire. God sends revival. And if revival dies or fire dies, it is not God's fault. It is our fault. Dios manda avivamiento Dios manda fuego y si se muere el avivamiento y si se apaga el fuego no es culpa de Dios es culpa de nosotros it's our fault because you never tell them it's our fault because we let the fire die porque nosotros dejamos que se, que, que se apague el fuego but we have to keep it burning I said we have to keep it burning. Yeah. Hallelujah. God initiates the move. God initiates the revival. But it's up to us to keep it moving. Dios origina mi hermano el mover. Dios hace el mover. Dios comienza el avivamiento. Dios manda el fuego. Pero nosotros tenemos que mover ese fuego. I believe, I believe with all of my heart that we are the generation that is going to pass down the revival. We are the generation that is going to pass down the passion into our kids. La pasión a nuestros hijos. Nosotros somos la generación que va a llevar esto. Amen. Are you here with me? Amen. Because you never tell them, I am that generation. I am that generation. Hallelujah. Yo soy esa generación. Let me give you this real quick. You are as powerful as you are passionate. You are as powerful as you are passionate. Tú eres, eres así de poderoso como eres de apasionado. If you are not passionate, you are not powerful. Si no eres apasionado, no eres poderoso. Come on, somebody. I believe God wants to talk to his people. I believe God wants to talk to his people today. Yes. Are you here with me? Yo siento y yo sé que Dios quiere hablar. I believe God wants to move in his people every single day. Dios quiere moverse en el pueblo de Dios todos los días. Are you here with me? He wants to move every single day. And it's, the question is not whether God wants to move, be moved, or move in our life. The question is, who is willing to sacrifice themselves and come to the altar and become a living sacrifice so that he can be used in the, in the kingdom of God? ¿Quién quiere venir a hacer un sacrificio vivo para ser usado en la presencia de Dios? I'm waiting on God to move. No, no, God said I'm waiting on you to die to self. Estoy esperando que Dios venga. Estoy esperando que Dios se mueva. Dice Señor, no, yo estoy esperando que tú mueras a ti mismo. I want you to take up your cross. I want you to deny self. Quiero que tomes tu cruz. Quiero que te niegues a ti a sí mismo. Aleluya. Because God wants to use you. God wants to use you in a mighty way. Dios quiere moverse. God wants to show his favor upon your life. Dios quiere mostrarte el favor, mi hermano. Dios quiere usarte de una manera especial. But I think that there's people, church, that, aleluya, that are here, that, 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 that they, don't, they don't want the move because the move requires commitment. Mucha gente no quiere, hermanos, el mover de Dios porque el mover de Dios requiere, aleluya, compromiso. Sí, amén. 
requiere compromiso. I believe one of the dangerous things in churches today is this. Una de las cosas más peligrosas en las iglesias es esto. One of the, one of the, 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 the most dangerous things is that people in churches have lost the fear of the Lord. Una de las cosas más, pero más peligrosas que ha sucedido en la gente cristiana y en las iglesias es que han perdido el temor a Dios. You have lost the fear of God. You have lost the fear of God. And when you lose the fear of God, you lose the passion for God. Cuando pierdes el temor a Dios, pierdes la pasión para Dios. And you lose the fire. And you don't want to please God, you want to please man. No quieres complacer a Dios, solamente al hombre. Are you here with me? There's people, church, sometimes they come to the church and they want to leave. They want to leave right away. They don't want to get into the presence of God. No quieren entrar en la presencia de Dios. Hay gente que viene a la iglesia y que de volada se quiere ir. Aleluya. They want to look. Se miran al reloj y se quieren ir. And they want to go and they want to go. They don't want to. They don't want to be in the presence of God. And then they start compromising. Y empiezan a comprometer la palabra de Dios. Aleluya. We need church to get hungry for God. We need church, hallelujah, to get back on fire for God. Debemos, mi hermano, de, de, de regresar a, a estar en fuego por Dios, a tener esa pasión para Dios. Are you here with me today? Aleluya. We need to be in an atmosphere of His presence. Estar en una atmósfera de su presencia. Be in an atmosphere of fire. En una atmósfera del fuego. Listen, you can look at the fire that is in California. It started in, in one place. Comenzó en un lugar. Now they have thousands of acres that are burning. Hermano, ya se están quemando miles de acres. Pero ese fuego comenzó en un lugar allá en California. Y ahora se han estado quemando. Acres, mi hermano, aleluya, por todos los lugares allá en California. Acres are burning, aleluya. But that tells me that fire is contagious. Eso me dice a mí, mi hermano, que el fuego es contagioso, aleluya. So if you are on fire for God, guess what? Your children are going to be on fire for God. Your house is going to be on fire for God. Everywhere you go, there's going to be fire, aleluya. Donde quiera que vayas, mi hermano, va a haber fuego. Tus hijos estarán en fuego. Tu casa estará en fuego. Your house will be on fire. But if you are not on fire for God, then you can't expect your kids to be on fire for God. You can't tell your kids to act right and you don't act right. No podemos decirle a nuestros hijos que se porten bien y nosotros no nos portamos bien. No podemos decirle a nuestros hijos que, que, que sirvan a Dios bien. We can't tell our kids, hey, you need to serve God and then we're not serving God. No, no, all my emails, say, come on somebody. We, we, we are quick to tell our children to serve God and to, to be faithful and don't be lying or don't be cursing, but mm. Mm -hmm. and what we end up doing is we end up confusing our kids. Venemos a confundir a nuestros hijos. No eches maldiciones, no eches mentiras. Y nosotros somos los más mentirosos. Come on, somebody. Don't be lying. You know God don't like liars. Bill Collector calls you. Tell him I'm not here. ¿Verdad? Nos habla el que, el que está, el cobrador te habla el cobrador. Dile que no estoy, dile que no estoy. Come on, boy. What do we do when they knock at the door? Bill Collector knocks on the door. What, do you, what is the first thing you do? You go to the window to go look to see who it is. And if it's the bill collector, you stand still right there. Hallelujah. They're going to go. They're going to leave. They're going to leave. You know. And then you tell your kid, don't be lying. They're like, but you just. Come on, somebody. We, we, we've all done this. Todos hemos hecho esto. 
is just a white lie, Pastor. It's a little lie. A lie, it's a lie. Black, white, brown, yellow, green, a lie is a lie. Una mentira es mentira. Blanca, negra, morada, café, no importa. Mentira es mentira. Right? Hallelujah. We have lost passion. David said, one thing I desire. One thing I desire. And that is what I will seek. Passion causes you to seek. Una cosa he demandado Jehová. Dice, y esta buscaré. La pasión causa que vayas en busca de Dios. Passion causes us to seek God. Passion causes us. Listen, Tommy Tenney wrote a book called God Chasers. Tommy Tenney is an escritor que escribió un libro que se llama En Busca En Búsqueda de Dios. And in his first chapter of his book, I mean, I, if you haven't read that book, I, I, I encourage you to read it. Si no, usted ha leído ese libro, le quiero animar a que lo lea. But in his first book, en su libro primero, he talks about how him and his son, his younger child, they used to play hide and seek. Él y su hijo pequeño, dice, en su en el primer capítulo, dice que él y su hijo jugaban a las escondidas. Have you anybody played hide and seek before? And he said, I would hide. I would hide behind the door and my son would be following and he would be trying to look for me. He would be chasing me until he would not stop until he found me. Mi hijo me buscaba y a veces me buscaba 10, 20 minutos. Andaba buscándome, pero no paraba hasta que no me encontraba. Some of us are not as passionate for God because if we don't feel them in the first five minutes of the service, we quit pursuing. Si no en muchos de nosotros si no encontramos a Dios en los primeros cinco minutos del servicio, dejamos de perseguirlo. And then we say church was boring today. El servicio estaba aburrido. No, church was not boring. Guess who was boring? Joel. <laughs> Church was not born. We are. Whatever, however we come in here, that's what we're going to make of the church, of the service. ¿Cómo entramos en el, si entramos aquí con pasión, hermano, vamos a encontrar a Dios? You're going to find God. The lady that was here has only been in church three weeks, three, two services Continually. Dos servicios. Continuos. Continuos. Testes. But within these two services, she got a miracle. Amen. Recibió un milagro. And there's people here that have been in church 10 and 20 years, and you're still waiting for a miracle. Come on. Come on. But you know what the thing is? She came in here believing God. Her passion, her desire was, I'm going in there one way, but I'm not coming out the same way. Voy a entrar a la iglesia de una forma, pero no voy a salir igual. Su mentalidad era diferente. And listen, she, didn't have, she, she, she could have said, I'm waiting till Pastor finishes so he can lay hands on me. No, you know when it happened? When worship was going on. When worship, cuando la adoración. And I told you right now, if there's no worship, there's no fire, there's no miracle. Si no hay adoración, no hay milagro, no hay fuego, mi hermano. And the moment that she began to worship, catch it, the moment she began to worship, she said, I felt something hot. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Why? Because she believed. 
she said, I felt something hot. And she said that the moment that she felt something hot, el momento que sintió algo, algo que, que se quemaba adentro en el hueso, she said, she moved her head, movió su mano. Hallelujah. She came in here like this. But then when she left, she left like this. I was at the door shaking her hand. She goes, look. She was still going like this. Todavía iba así moviendo la mano. Why? Because the fire of God, el fuego de Dios en la adoración, in the worship, in the praise, did the job without me having to lay hands on it. Sin yo ponerle manos. Amen. Come on, somebody. Sister Romero that was sitting here about two years ago or a year ago, cancer. She had lost her hair. Había perdido el cabello. She had a little deal on her head. Traía como una, una garra en su cabeza. I didn't lay hands on her. Yo no puse mano. But you know what I did? I said, you're healed in the name of Jesus. Y que está sana en el nombre de Jesús. And then we start, we continue doing service. Seguimos con el servicio. And all of a sudden, she goes back to the doctor and says, you don't have no more cancer. And her hair starts going back. Le empieza a crecer a través del pelo. Y le dice, doctor, ya no tienes cancer. Did I touch her? No, no. She believed that God did something. Ella creyó. Y hizo Dios algo. Listen, we need the passion of God to continue. Continue to see the move of God in the church. Necesitamos, mi hermano, el fuego de Dios para poder ver, mi hermano, los milagros que vienen. I believe that what we need to do is say the same thing that David said. I saw a in your presence. I saw to look forward to it. Solamente quiero estar en tu presencia. Eso es lo que yo busco, eso es lo que yo quiero. I desire that. I desire that. Are you here with me? Amen. How many of us have had situations and problems in our life? ¿Cuántos hemos tenido problemas y situaciones en nuestra vida? Yes. Pastor, how can I get the passion back? Pastor, ¿cómo puedo agarrar otra vez la pasión? How can I come back to my first love? Very, very simple. The first thing we gotta do is we gotta repent. Primer paso es arrepentirnos. We need to repent. You know why we need to repent? Because in a lot of our lives, God is not top priority. En muchas de nuestras vidas, Dios no es una prioridad. For many of us, God is our last resort. Para muchos de nosotros, Dios es el último resultado, la última respuesta. I'm going to try all of these things right here. And if this doesn't work, there's always God over here. Voy a tratar todas estas cosas aquí. Si nada de eso trabaja, voy a ir con Dios. We need to change that around and say, I'm going to go straight to Him and I'm going to bypass all of this right here and I'm going to go straight to Him because He knows everything. Voy a pasar todo esto de aquí y voy derechito a él. We need to church repent, repent from our ways, repent from putting other things before him. Arrepentirnos, mi hermano, arrepentirnos de todo lo malo que se que hemos hecho. ¿Cuántos dicen amén? I leave you with this. Te dejo con esto. When you lose the fire, the only thing you're going to have is religion. Cuando pierdes el fuego, lo único que vas a tener es religión. And religion cannot save you. La religión no te puede salvar. How many of you How many of you can say, Pastor, I lost my first love? Yo he perdido mi primer amor, Pastor. I need to return and go back. Tengo que regresar a mi primer amor. How many of us, church, have lost the passion for God? ¿Cuántos hemos perdido la pasión para Dios? Now catch this. I didn't say the passion for serving God. 
I said the passion for God. No dije la pasión de servir a Dios, dije la pasión por Dios. Because we can be passionate about serving and still not passionate about Him. Podemos estar apasionados por servir a Dios, pero no apasionados por Él. You can get busy of doing things for God that you forget about God. Podemos, hermano, estar bien ocupados haciendo cosas para Dios y olvidarnos de Dios. I've been in situations where I have found myself doing a lot of things for God that I forget about Him. When in our life the first thing is God. And then he said, everything else, I'm going to add it to you. Dice Dios, si me pones a mí primero, todo lo demás viene. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added unto you. ¿Cuántos dicen amén? May I ask you to stand to your feet. You know your life. Usted sabe su vida, usted conoce su vida mejor. You don't have to tell me how you've been living. 